They say farming is difficult, and I can believe it. I mean, look at this massive space around me. Now imagine having your sheep roaming out here, open to the elements. The goal of our farmers is to give these sheep a good, safe life before they make it to your shelves. Woolworths, along with Conservation South Africa, as well as the Cape Leopard Trust, are aiming to do just that by working with three clusters of farmers in this area to try to provide wildlife-friendly meat. Cluster 1. These farms will be the basis for comparison for this study since traditional lethal predator control methods will still be used. Cluster 2. These farms have removed all traps from the research area and they have an Anatolian shepherd dog guarding their flock. Cluster 3. On these farms, all traps have also been removed from the research area and they have an eco-ranger with a dog who together will protect the sheep. But the eco-ranger will also monitor all wildlife activity on the farm. Wildlife is abundant in this farming area bordering the Namakwa National Park and farmers are willing to try to find solutions to coexist. So when Conservation South Africa approached this trial group, they agreed to fund an insurance policy allowing for stock losses to be paid out. This way, farmers in the trial group would be financially secure throughout the testing period. Melinda, I have seen a study that says a predator stock loss sits at 6%. And reading on social media what farmers are saying, they're saying it's closer to 30%. I mean, that's huge discrepancies between the two. But now, yes, I think it's difficult to say. How do we know what has happened to it? If you find a carcass, there are ways to know whether a predator has caught it, mm -hmm. um, or did it die from exposure, or did it die from a disease. All these things happen to livestock. So I think it's difficult to put a figure on it, and that's in part why we need to study. Philip Kraus is one of the farmers taking part in the study. He and his father-in-law are fifth and sixth generation farmers in this Namakwaland area. Boerderijse industrie soos enige ander industrie, so dit gaan verander en mens moet aanpas by die tye en verbruikers raak net meer en meer bewus van waar kom my vlees vandaan. Ja, nie ons as boere besef dit ook, maar dit is rarig vir ons maar 'n uitdaging om elke dag met die roofdiere te te boer of meer saam te leef. So vir ons om totaal en al wildvriendelik to go is, is maar moeilijk, maar hij toch potentieel om toch bij te kan groei. En indien hij moest nog groei, moet daar toch een aanvraag of daar is supply wees. En dit is waar mensen moest nog moeten inkomen en kijken of mensen kan dit moest nog volhoudbaar voorzien. It's from farmers like Philip that retailers like Woolworths plan to source their lamb. Woolworths has been involved with these trials for a number of years as part of their good business journey. Last year, they committed 4.7 million rand to help create a sustainable, wildlife-friendly lamb supply. There's been a lot of buy-in from the farmers that are involved in the project and the information that we've received is very promising and we're looking forward to implementing it um, for the next phase of the program. How are you going to prove, though, that it really is wildlife-friendly? Well, we've compiled the wildlife friendly protocol in consultation with NGOs and have submitted it to the South African Meat Industry Company for their approval. Once it's been approved, we'll workshop it to our farmers and hopefully we'll have wildlife friendly meat on our shelves. These cameras have been set up in a grid over 810 square kilometers, incorporating the 12 groups of farms right on the edge here of the national park border. This grid is now heavily monitored with all this technology, and it is hoped that the images coming out of here will help researchers understand predator movements better and so be able to assist the trial group of farmers. We're really interested in quantifying prey diversity and density. So we can compare the density and diversity of prey in our baseline period to that of the treatment period when we have the Anatolian dogs and eco-rangers in place. But it's not actually just about the cameras. Um, 
you actually following the, the predators? We are. There's, there's several studies out there that have tested the effectiveness of Anatolian dogs. But in order to really get at what the predators are eating, you do have to track the predators themselves. So this is a cage trap that we use to capture caracal. Um, we have them fit with a, a transmitter there on the side. So when the door falls, the transmitter will release a magnet and we will get a signal that there's an animal captured in the trap. Right. So we, we will come out here immediately and then tranquilize the animal and outfit it here with this GPS radio collar. The GPS collars are also placed on the Anatolian shepherd dogs as well as the sheep, which enables the researchers to overlap movements on all these variables. Eco rangers are a new concept for farming, and they work hand in hand with the Anatolian shepherd dog. They are eyes on the ground collecting not only predator tracks and preventing predator interactions, but also monitoring and observing other wildlife in the area. Bonet managed to grab Moses Biekus outside his office. Moses gathers valuable data, which is then stored on this handheld device. It's not only flock numbers that are collected daily, but the overall condition of the sheep Environmental factors, predator scat, are all recorded in Moses' cyber tracker. Predator-prey relationships have been with us since the dawn of time, and it's important we manage those relationships to the benefit of humans and wildlife.